Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Dexter Season 4 Thoughts So before I get to the meat of this season, I'm going to run through all the minor things just to make sure I comment on them before I get into Trinity and the major things going on for Dexter this season. I liked the relationship between La Guerta and Batista. I thought that was very credible and they're just really sweet together. And I like the you know twists and turns along the way of, you know, what if the captain finds out and them eventually getting married and, you know, by the end of the season they've gotten married. What's what's next, you know? So the very final thing the very final development, as far as that goes, is I believe it's him moving into her place, and you know, we'll find out how that goes. So, yeah, I liked you know several things with Deborah. Loved seeing Lundy again. Just love that guy. He's just he's so much fun. You know, he even still has lunch at one o'clock. That's just you know, and the whole. And him being back, you know, even for the brief amount of time, it's, you know, it's a danger to Dexter along with this, you know, him tracking Trinity and, of course, with Deborah, you know, he didn't come back for her, but now he is back and he's going to stay, so... Excuse me, it's very difficult for her. Excuse me, you know, she thinks she's, hap she's happy with Anton and, you know, but there's just that little thing. And, and you see these little hints, you know, because she loves the police work and so does he. And Anton literally can't even stomach it, you know. So it, it's not that there's anything really wrong with Anton, it's just that... Anton and Deborah probably just don't, you know, in the long run, aren't going to be that great together. You know, they don't have the longevity that, you know, Deborah and Lundy would have. So, you know, I love that I didn't expect them to kill him off. I thought that he was going to stay and, you know, have that. That was one of the several courageous things they did this season. The, you know, having Deborah cheat on Anton with Lundy, you know, I thought that it was nice to have this sort of thing happen because, you know, it's the kind of thing that happens in real life. It's not a good thing, but it does happen and they address it the right way. I like that she doesn't let him find out, she tells him and she insists, insists that they're going to break up after that. You know, she she has that much integrity in spite of, you know, she, she made a mistake, but she owns up to it, and she is taking the full consequence. She will not have, you know, but yeah. The, um, I suppose that's more or less it for the minor things. I liked the continuing, you know, Deborah getting closer and closer to the truth about Dexter. And by the end of the season, she knows that Laura Moser was Dexter's mother and that, you know, Biney was his brother. And then he's like, you know, but that's all she knows. And we have this sort of, you know, one of the main themes of the season is, you know, also with mirroring Dexter's life with Trinity's life is, you know, is one of these monsters an inherently destructive presence in other people's lives? You know, as we learn more and more about Trinity, we realize that he very much is. So Dexter has to wonder, am I that too? And, you know, when Deborah realizes you were related to the guy who almost killed me, you know, Dexter is outright saying, you know, I'm sorry, I, I shouldn't have been in your life, and 
in that wonderful way that Deborah masters, she bluntly states, you're full of it. You are a good thing in my life. You know, you're the, consi you're the only consistently good thing in my life. You know, and then he thinks back, that's, you know, Rita said that I was good for the kids, so maybe it will be better, you know. And that, of course, you know, then we have the, the end of the season with Rita actually being the last, definitive last victim of Trinity. And we only realize that after Trinity has died and after Dexter thinks that he got to Trinity in time and that everything is okay now. And we again, you know, have to wonder, is, is Dexter inherently dangerous? Is, is it going to spread? And we have yet another born of blood. You know, yet another child born of blood. And, you know, now it is, you know, is, is it actually going to spread to Harrison? Has it already spread to Harrison? Is Harrison now going to grow up as damaged as, you know, Dexter and Biney and, you know, Arthur and so on? The... You know, and, and it really sets up, other than that, it's just really interesting you know, Dexter, he has been without Rita for a short period in, you know, in the time we've known him, in the time we followed him across the show, but there was a possibility that they would get back together, and now that is no longer the case, so it's interesting to see where his character is going to go, and what's going to happen with the children, and just... You know, everything it's going to do to the character and the show. And it, it's one of, it's an additional one of these really brave things that the show has done. It just, it catches you completely by surprise, and like I said, it's a, a great setup for the future. I really shouldn't beat about beat around the bush anymore. Trinity is one of the most interesting things about this season and really the entire show so far. I would go so far as to say that this is probably the best season of the show of these first four. For a while I considered the first one to have been unsurpassed by the second and third, but with this one I gotta say, this is probably the most complex and the most compelling, the most surprising. It's, and some of the very most powerful as well, possibly the most powerful. One fantastic thing about Trinity is that we, every single episode we find out something else about him and eventually it just gels into this basically completely solved jigsaw puzzle that allows us to see all of Arthur Mitchell, you know, by the end of the season. We know who he is, pretty much. The psychology behind his killings is one of the one of the vital things to the character, and one of the things that makes him so interesting. He is one of the most, possibly the most, sympathetic monster in the entire series so far, other than Dexter himself. And, in, you know, the, the genesis of his monster is so tragic and and it truly was not his fault. And just the... Yeah, and, and while that is somewhat true of some of the others, 
this is a monster who truly doesn't want to be one. He feels compelled to do what he does, but he doesn't take any enjoyment out of it. He, he actually feels, you know, he feels bad about it, and at the same time there are moments where he feels like he isn't getting what he should. He, he feels like he should be getting more gratitude and love from his family without realizing what a terror he is to them. And maybe I should start with his original family, you know, his sister and his parents. You know, their death and, you know, the, the way the family was pulled apart, starting with this one incident for which he really wasn't to blame. It was just that when humans see something, excuse me, horrible, they want someone to blame. They want there to be someone's will behind it. So to his father, it became that it was his fault that the sister died. And, you know, from that, of course, also that it was his fault that his mother committed suicide. The idea that he never processed that and he carried that for all those years, you know, decades, several decades. And the only way he could figure to process was to reenact it. You know, it it's a, just a, a spiral of just, you know, it, as long as he doesn't get it out of his system, he's going to keep reenacting it. And, you know, the, what we actually see a very clear indication of this when he finds that Dexter, Kyle, has also kill someone, even by accident. You know, at first we, we and Dexter think that Arthur is, you know, shocked and kind of, you know, that, that he thinks it's horrible when really he, you know, he suddenly finds that he's not alone. And for all these years he's thought that he was alone. So he you know, he actually tries to, you know, he, he shares it with people. He, he starts confessing like crazy, you know. And soon after, he tries to commit suicide. You know, he dumps the ashes intended for a new, you know, slew of victims. And he tries to commit suicide. And when he comes back from that, you know, then we're back to this sort of, you know, he starts, he tries to start the killing again. The... When with his family, he's very patriarchal. In, in general, he is a very old-fashioned, very patriarchal kind of person, so as the elder of many of the people he is around, as the head of the family, he feels that he is an authority and that he should not be questioned, that he could not be questioned, because he must by default be correct and no one is allowed to question his decisions and, you know, courses of action. And one of the, one of the aspects of that is to not, you know, the, the, that old kind of thinking 
that kind of family system, among other things, explicitly prevents or, you know, avoids open communication between the family. So he really would not have felt like he should say it to anyone. You know, you know, when he was a child, he would have felt like the horrible thing that happened to him, he's not allowed to share with anyone. And as such, it, you know, became this this urge to kill ritualistically instead. The, the reveal that he is a family man, and even religious, at first has you questioning how that could possibly be, how he could possibly keep it from the, his family, and how he could prevent it from affecting them, and for so long. You know, and Dexter is already having trouble, you know, preventing it from affecting his family. But we see soon after that it does very much affect his family in another of the twists of the season and of his character. And the psychology of what it has done to his family is brilliant and very, very credible. The son intended to be, you know, his his heir to the throne, the, the next patriarchal male figure to come out of the family, is defiant and protective of the others, you know, there, he would have left it if it hadn't been for, you know, his mother and his sister. The mother and wife is very, very obedient and very careful. She is terrified of Arthur, and very seldom does she question anything or not immediately go along with, you know, what has been, what what he, what Arthur wants to happen. You know, she. You know, the, the, yeah, Google battered wife syndrome. And the daughter, you know, it's just, her sexuality has almost definitely been repressed. He wants to be in control of everything. So, to him, she is still just daddy's little girl, and she can't possibly grow up. Again, an aspect of this old, you know, they, they, the show manages to comment on so many things, and here it comments on this old-fashioned style of raising children, and the harm it does obviously here, fueled by the fact that he is actually abusive, which is not necessarily the case for, you know, there, there are at least degrees of how abusive a man is when using pure authority to, you know, to be the head of the family. So she, you know, her sexuality is very ripe and she, from the repression of her sexuality, she realizes that it is, you know, it is important to men, you know, it is important to her father that her sexuality be kept intact, that her purity remain intact. So she, you know, she considers it a, a tool, a, you know, a, a currency that she can use to get out of her situation. The moment that a foreign man comes into their house and she gets some time alone with this man. Dexter himself and the 
changes. Early on we get some nice commentary on suburbia. And you know, it could almost be Todd Salons directing an episode or two there. It's you know although the sexual perversion doesn't come until later, I believe, in the season. The the whole situation with that, with you know, Dexter having to fit in to this new group, and you know, very you know, f further alienating him and further making him question if he can really, you know, if he can actually live up to this marriage and to the these new roles that he is accepted, you know, father, husband, suburbanite. We get a, you know, a comment on the financial crisis and, or a couple really, but only one of them, excuse me, strictly, well, a couple, anyway, with, you know, the man losing his home and, you know, thus becoming a, you know, a, I don't know, sort of passive-aggressive, destructive influence around the neighborhood. You know, and later on in the season we have the family hiding out in the basement of, you know, a house that isn't currently being lived in, you know, having nowhere else to go. Dexter, you know, as a parent, he grows, you know, at first it's just a sort of, you know, and they do this very cleverly, the baby is, as a presence, is really just a source of frustration for Dexter, you know, at the very beginning of the season, it's really just keeping him from sleeping, but as time goes, you know, he, he realizes he's never going to let anyone hurt Harrison, you know, he grows into a loving, caring father, a protective father, you know, also as seen in, you know, his attempts to shield Rita, successfully, from Trinity, you know, getting her out of the way so that, you know, Trinity can't do anything. One brief thing on Trinity, I'm not entirely certain when it was that Dexter got into the trunk. I guess it was that he got to the car place before Trinity and then he removed the oil cap or whatever, I'm not a car person, got in the trunk and then just lay there until Arthur stopped the car and went to check, I guess. Anyway, he, Dexter, gradually realizes how to deal with the surly, typical teenager that... The name escapes me at the moment, but Rita's daughter is becoming Astor. We have both Trinity and Dexter being thrown off their game somewhat for the season. They throw each other off their game, really. And, you know, things start going wrong, things that they usually mastered. I thought that the child that Arthur abducts is a quite good actor and they did a good job on the character as well. I think it would have been an annoyance to hear a child constantly complain about not being, you know, and just, just whining about being scared basically. And as we see from the very beginning with this child, he's just kind of, you know, 
of a brat, you know. First thing we hear him say is to the nanny, you're not my mother. And that's just, that sets the tone right there. But he's not obnoxious either. He doesn't get to be just irritating. You know, he shows defiance. And then over time, Arthur gets to him because he is just so sympathetic, you know. And he downright trusts him. And it almost costs him his life. Fortunately for the investigation, somewhat unfortunately for Dexter, Arthur actually used his four walls, one heart van, you know, so they quickly got the image, the icon, recognized, and yeah. The imagery of the bloodbath is also quite I don't know there's there's just something about that image that is just it it sticks in your mind and they use it really well as well and I have to admit I had not seen coming that by the end of the season, we would have another child born of blood, and that it would be Harrison, even though the very first death by, you know, bloodbath is in the very first episode. So, you know, and another, that's one thing I think the series does incredibly well. The sort of running theme, you know, the, you can see where it starts. If you, when, when you've seen the ending to something in an episode or in a season, you go back, the, the seed is there. You just, you know, the beginning of the episode or the beginning of the season, you can tell that's where they started. Where they end up is a direct result. You know, there is no sudden... I've yet to see in this show some sudden change where something no longer makes sense or holds up or something was built up to that didn't go anywhere or something that just came out of nowhere and was not built up to. One quick thing that I forgot to mention before, I liked the two things then. I liked the Christine character excuse me, that you, gr excuse me, gradually realize, excuse me, why she's doing what she's doing, the, you know, the reporter gig is in order to, you know, protect her father, that, you know, she's trying to find out as much as she can about their progress on discovering him, now that there is, you know, a real you know, a real sort of case there. And she even goes so far as to kill Lundy and, you know, wound Deborah. And just that whole thing and Quinn with her. I have to admit for a while I actually sort of suspected if Quinn could have something to do with it, but then we see his reaction to finding out that she for sure had something to do with it. And, you know, you really see his integrity there. That I liked. Also after, you know, they they go back to that whole thing. I didn't think it was terribly interesting the third season, the whole thing about he might be dirty, but then she's the ex of him, you know, the informer chick, and that I didn't find that all that compelling. But in this season, you know, Dexter finds out that he's dirty, but he doesn't want to be called dirty. He has a, you know, he gets very defensive and suddenly he goes on the offense because now Dexter has something on him. He wants something on Dexter. I have a feeling he is becoming the next Dokes and I think that is, you know, it's both good and bad because we've already seen that, but at the same time he is surrounded by cops. Sooner or later someone has to, you know, suspect him 
and we really haven't had that, you know, since, yeah, Dokes went away, basically, and, I don't know, I, I think it, it's piqued my interest, I want to see where it's going, you know, and I'm beginning to like the character of Quinn. He didn't do that much for me in the third season, but, you know, here, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of liking what they're doing. I also like how, at the very beginning of this season, we really have something from the last season holding over to this season, you know. It seemed like the other seasons kind of ended trying to, or the, well, the first two seasons, anyway, tr ended trying to, you know, the, the old sitcom thing of, by the end, you know, back to the status quo, we have to set things set the clock back so we can start at the same start-off point. With this season, you know, Deborah's still with Anton. We've got, you know, obviously the marriage is still intact. Harrison is still there. Quinn is still there. You know, we have all these things that have not been just cancelled or, you know, in the other seasons there was maybe, there were maybe one or two things. You know, Dokes is still on Dexter's case at the beginning of season two after the events of season one. Anyway. Dexter and the changes he underwent. I suppose that more or less covers it. But yeah, I like the, the theme, the, his inner conflict of, you know, is it best for this family if I just went away? Is, is my presence a good thing or a bad thing? And, you know, kind of, how can I keep up this double life? You know, eventually he has to give up his apartment, and just the, the very realization that he still has it, you know, Rita is not exactly thrilled when she finds that out. And, you know, it, it is an interesting kind of, for a while, it really seems like their marriage might not last because of, as he calls it, his dark passenger. What, you know, how do you maintain something like that? And, you know, there's the this continuing theme of, you know, he, he can't keep it to, he, he can't share it with anyone, he cannot, he, he has to keep it secret from her, and how is he going to do that, you know, for a while there, how is he going to do that without an apartment, you know, where is he going to hide his stuff, and then he gets, you know, the, the room, the, you know, outside thing that they build for him, but then Cody breaks through the glass, and, you know, it could have been, a really bad thing. I'm also, you know, going to be quite interested in finding out where he moves his kill shed to, or his, you know, his kill tools and the like. I don't know, it just doesn't seem like... Is he really going to keep it in the shipping container? I would imagine sooner or later, might it not be moved, or might not you know, someone need to use it or something. I just don't think it's a good permanent solution. Also, as far as timelines go, Trinity killing Rita, because obviously that is what happened. Rita would not have killed herself. That is... Yeah. So... Oh, and I love the mirroring of... You know, they, they really... Completely spell it out to us with cutting back to Dexter being carried away, but seeing Harrison now in the situation that Dexter was in, that was great, you know. And, you know, you you wonder, you know, because Harrison is only one year old, as per the brief scene of the birthday being celebrated, I would imagine, around one years old. So, Maybe he doesn't fully realize what he saw. You know, Dexter was a bit older. But at the same time, it really does seem like it could 
influence him in that kind of way. Now, Trinity doing that, I guess he found Dexter's real address after, you know, realizing that Deborah's place wasn't it, you know, and really, he could have, you know, he could have found it in her address book, you know, because he, you know, the names, yeah, he might have figured they were related. He could have looked in some other registry, you know, I guess just Dexter hadn't gotten around to changing his address for that kind of official listing or whatever, and that makes sense, you know, he hasn't lived there for that long, and he kept his apartment for several months of that. Seems like there was one more thing I really wanted to add. Yes, just briefly, I liked the, you know, the theme of Dexter possibly being dangerous to his family, also being explored through the female monster that he kills during the season. And with that, they also get a point made on, and, and also the fact that she is genuinely a dangerous presence to him, you know, once he starts going after her, she actually turns the tables and goes after him, you know, because she is a cop and, yeah, he's not being entirely secretive, so. Yes, I like how with that character they pointed out about, you know, that some women use rape allegations as a sort of, you know, secret, impossible to defeat weapon. You know, obviously, whenever a woman claims that she was raped, it should be investigated. She should be trusted at first, although no one should be, you know, it's still innocent until proven guilty as far as the alleged rapist, but if a woman claims she was raped, it should be looked into you know, but at the same time, sadly, there are women who abuse that and claim that they were raped as, you know, yeah, to, as, as a sort of weapon. One part of Trinity throwing Dexter off his game is, of course, the Dexter this time, finally, unlike the sort of cop-out or change thing of Season 3, this time, Dexter downright kills an innocent person. He does later say that apparently, you know, that photographer was an abuser of women. I don't know, I thought it was just makeup. Anyway. I do wish they had gone into that more. I like that he kind of, you know, felt bad about it. That, you know, the following episode is like, okay, well, he's now gone, but it's pretty clear that the photographer didn't do it. And you hear Dexter's inner voice going, come on, it was an accident. You know, that was pretty good. But I do wish they had really gone into that and had, you know, a real conflict there. Like, you know, the resolution of the conflict is not great in Punisher Warzone, but at least they do go into that conflict and really have this kind of, you know, you kill people who kill people, but now you kill someone, you know, who you shouldn't have. Doesn't that make you one of them? I just wish they had gone into that more, and I think now that, you know, moving into the fifth season, which I haven't seen a single second of, by the way, I think it's too late to go back over that, go back into that, so that feels like a wasted opportunity, but at least they did do something that courageous with Dexter, have him actually, you know, it's been a gamble since the very first episode to have a lead who actually kills people and not in self-defense. But, you know, to actually have him kill someone who he wasn't supposed to, that is pretty, pretty courageous. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box.
Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.